Hey, it's Kate with yogahealer.com and the Yogi Detox. And I'm here to answer some questions. I got some great questions from the Q&A email I put out about your next detox. And so I'm just gonna spend the next few minutes talking about, about your questions. But before I do, I wanna tell you why I detox, because I think that'll also put a little bit of the rest of the questions in a, in a framework. I've detoxed twice a year um, for years and years and years, like probably 15 years. And why I detox isn't necessarily to, uh, you know, like to, to drop weight or to clear up my skin or things like that. I basically detox to press my reset button. And what that means for me is I create a space, a time and a space that's, you know, anywhere from five days to 21 days where I, I basically simplify. I simplify when I go to bed, when I wake up, my daily routines become very much devoted to deeper self-care. I do an at-home retreat. And my, my family actually, over time, has come along with me on this. And so what happens is that our household habits, they up-level. They start to get better, cleaner, more simple. The whole house gets a little bit cleaner. The, you know, getting crap out of, you know, whatever, the fridge, the closets, the bathrooms, our bodies, that all happens. It's a natural, it's a natural holistic spring cleanse, a natural holistic fall cleanse, and we just do it twice a year, and we expect it. And what the nice thing is, is whatever little tendencies that are kind of out of balance, we're gaining momentum in our lives, they just get uprooted. And the habits that we're trying to ingrain more deeply, maybe it's a longer meditation practice, maybe it's um, the way that we communicate, doing more talking circles, doing just more heart opening communication, that that just starts to get more and more traction. So that's the reason we detox. Now, if you're here because you want to detox, uh, you know, and you want to lose weight and you want to clear up your skin, like those are really good reasons. You know, like your butt's too big, then your butt's too big. Like, let's not have your butt seat be so big. I mean, so there's so many different reasons to do this. Maybe you're here because you have anxiety and you're not sleeping well through the night, or your life feels like it's getting ahead of you a little bit and you just are trying to like slow down and live the life you want to live. It's all about that. It's all about you getting clear with living the life you want to live in the body you want to live it in. And for all of us, we're going to be coming at really different places. And you'll get that sense from the question. So let's dive right in there. So the first question, uh, what are the best common detox living liquid smoothies for spring versus fall? Or is that obvious? Just what's in season? What about pre-detox recipes for spring and fall? Okay, so... This is the thing is I, when I teach detox, I teach to the whole planet. And so I do Northern hemisphere, Southern hemisphere. The way that I think about it is if you're, if you're going into winter, you're releasing the heat from summer, clearing your channels, clearing out any inflammation, clearing out any, any stress from like being in summer and you're winding down into, into fall and winter. You're making a mindful, useful transition. So simply choosing foods that are, that are going to cool your system, like in the fall, there's a lot usually of apples, pears around. Those foods will pull toxic heat out of your body quickly. The pectin is a laxative, so it's also gonna pull energy down and ground. That's what we wanna do, because summer is light and bright up and out, and winter is down and in, and so we wanna mimic that. Okay, we're going downward and inward. Now, the opposite is happening if you've gone from if you're going from winter into summer, then you're already here. And actually, a few more of the questions were like, I feel like I'm wearing five heavy sweaters, but it's actually my body, right? So that feeling of being more you know, dense, heavy, and just wanting that feeling of being light and clear is the shift from winter to summer, that up and out experience. So the foods that we eat are gonna wanna mimic that. In the spring, things that sprout have a lot of energy. So I would do a lot of different, you know, a lot of sprouts, whether those are in soups or smoothies. I would, uh, you know, go more towards living foods in the spring. And, and for those who have more cooked foods in their diet, using more cooked roots in, uh, soups in in the fall. That's a great idea. So just you know, just those simple things. The tastes for spring are pungent and bitter and astringent. They're the tastes that get things shaking. And the tastes in fall, they're they're not that. They're sweet, sour, and salty. So doing more fermented foods uh, like miso, kimchi, making your own sauerkraut, making your own fermented vegetables, having those in the fall. Uh, are going to be those are going to be really good for just creating uh, you know a little bit more digestive power and allowing your inner fire to to be 
you know, strong without adding like the pungency of, of really spicy foods. Okay, pre-detox recipes. Uh, in general, it's like, to me, it's like where it, it so depends on where you're coming in to this process. So if you're coming into this process and, and you just know you've been eating some crap lately and there's some processed food in your cover and you've had, you know, maybe processed flours, you've had breads or pastas or pastries or whatever, like get out the crap. I mean, pre, pre cleanse is all about like, get out the crap and go towards simple. If all that's already out of your diet all the time, anyways, you want you just to ask yourself, like, what is, what's like the next step that's going to help my body prepare? If you already are, you know, off caffeine, if you don't use caffeine or alcohol or stuff, sugars, you know, that are refined, that are bad for your body, then, then pre cleanse is going to help you just start to wean, wean yourself off. Get less addicted. Go from a cup of coffee to three quarters of a cup of coffee to a half a cup of coffee. The slower the better, usually, because your system, you start to actually lose the taste for it. Your system adjusts. That might sound like a, a fairy tale. Um, and also, you know, if you just go to yogidetox.com and sign up for the recipes, there's like some free recipes on there and just get that. And there's tons of recipes in there for juices, smoothies, broths. Broths are a really great idea for moving more towards pre-detox. Okay, next question. Detoxing for Pitta Vata body type. She's perplexed on how to eat for a Pitta Vata constitution. It seems that she's a combo of both. Yeah, most of us are, have combo. Like I'm Pitta Kapha, she's Vata Pitta. Uh, so what's the best way to cleanse for a combo dosha? You know, one thing that I always look for is like what's dominant on that day? Like what's going on right now? What's trying to get your attention right now? So if your vata is high and you're ungrounded and you're unsettled and you're not getting enough sleep and you're distracted and you're running all over the place and you're eating meals at all different times a day, just focus on that. Like it, as far as the diet, like warm, moist, oily, and soup-like is better for vata. So soups and stews are going to be better than like juices and green smoothies with lots of sprouts. Fermented foods are really good for for vata. Not too spicy, and your pitta should be fine. Right? So if you don't, you have like kimchi with like cayenne and ginger, but you have some sauerkraut that's just made with cabbage and a little bit of salt, that's going to be, that's going to be a good food, you know, for those going into autumn, that's going to be good for that body type. For those going into summer, you might not, you might not want the fermented foods as much. You might though, that's fine. If your agni is upset, it's one of the best ways to balance Vata's agni is just like having foods that are pre-cooked. One pot meals, cooked foods, or some fermented foods. Really helpful. Um, if your pit is out of balance and you're super intense and you're just burning through food really, really quickly, uh, you know, just making sure your diet's a little bit more cooling. Go on the Yoga Detox recipes and look up the more cooling, pitta, pitta cooling foods and make your soups, smooth, smoothies, stews with those foods. Okay, next question. I'm obsessed with detox. I love this question. This is from Heather. Heather, you're so not alone. Uh, immediately after the last detox, I was signed, psyched to sign up for the next one. And that's what happens for those who are new around here. Like we have a huge continuity community um, and it's, there's some good traction in there because of that. So she's hesitant now. Why? Because she worries that she became obsessed with it. She certainly didn't do it perfectly far from it. If anything, she beat herself up for not doing it perfectly, for not listening to all the interviews or meditating longer or doing more yoga or not sitting and just being. Saying that, it reminds me I want to do it again and hit that reset button and try to improve myself. But it annoyed my husband because he saw me as being a bit manic about it. And so did her friends. And she goes on. Um, yeah, I totally, I totally get it. And it's like when we enter a hardcore path of yoga or meditation or freedom lifestyle, we start to realize how many ways we can wake up. And we start to see the potential of what, really where, what we can be like, what we can feel like, what our lifestyle can be like, what our work can be like, what our family life can be like, what our kitchen can be like. like we start to see this possibility and then we see like where the momentum of our family culture or our friend culture or our work culture is. And those two things, instead of being like this far apart, start to feel like they're this far apart. And there's a reckoning day with that. And, and part of it is the realization of like, oh shit, <laughs> I'm not getting the support. I, I need to be the person that I want to be. And other people, they already see you as 10 steps ahead of where they are. 
And so they're projecting to you that like you're already you've already made it. You're already there. Like you should actually drink more beer and drink more wine and have more coffee and just relax. And who cares if you know you know get used to eating foods that aren't that good for you. Maybe you won't be so sensitive. Like you might start to hear stuff like that. And it just, I just want to first of all say like, I totally, I so got it. I, and I'm so, I've so been there and understand that from a personal experience. Um, the way that I've, what the, basically the way that I've seen it is like, yeah, there's, you know, twice a year, I just allow myself to tune into what's best for me and maybe inspire others, maybe in my family. And I just see where that can go. And what I've noticed over doing this over years and years and years is that things change, things evolve, my family evolves. Like now, like my husband said to me the other day, like Indy needs to detox and I'm like, yes, she does. So we just put her on like a three day, you know, just very simple, whole foods diet, no exceptions, very strict routines, like paring everything down. And she, she has about an eight hour bounce back rate, meaning like she can be twerpy kid um, cause we've let her eat crap and we've let her stay up late and you know all those things that like you're not supposed to do that the grandparents are supposed to do sometimes we get lazy and sometimes that happens and all of a sudden we're like oh my gosh how did this happen but what i'm saying in this is that we need especially for those of us who want to evolve we need to give ourselves the opportunity to press the reset button and to go in and let go of the perfect picture of like i need to meditate as much as blah 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 maybe blah 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 or sit this much or do yoga this much and really start to tune into like what do I actually need to do to feel great? What do I need to do to feel like I'm, I'm just having a great day, that this is my perfect day? And then start to live into that and start to do that and honor the higher truth from that and start to separate some of the, the, you know, the family, cultural, friend cultural stuff that really doesn't feel like it actually boosts our highest self. And start to get a little bit of separation in those two times a year that we detox and just get that separation. And then from there to be in your truth. And it's hard because sometimes it does create, it does sometimes clarify our relationships. Like, okay, part of this, part of this isn't working. And, and I, you know, I would like to be in a relationship that's more supportive around my, you know, around feeling great, <laughs> around feeling healthy. And so it'll bring up, detoxing will bring up these deeper conversations. I mean, and I know it has for me uh, in, in my family and what's so beautiful is that it's like if we can really be present and work through it great things happen either way whether that means together apart whatever but it enables you to stand into a deeper truth all right that was a tough one um and yeah like i just want to say one more thing about that like most of us are the healthiest people that our other friends and family know like that's that's true and i get it and then i also get at least i know this for me personally i also get that there's another there's always another level of integrity uh to step into it's just the nature of evolution it's the nature of like being evolution in a body and for me over the last two to three years so much of that has been in my work um, in wanting to live where I wanted to live and wanting to learn how to surf before I got too old to be a really, you know, solid stand up paddle surfer. You know, doing these things that like they it just became clear because I allowed the time and the space to listen. Like, what do I really, really want? And some of you might be like, that's kind of petty, Kate. And it is kind of petty, but you know what? I love standing up and paddling into a wave and I love working online and I love living in Mexico and raising my child a certain way. and you know, being a little bit more free of cultural impact uh, that, that wasn't in line with my, my values and what I wanted my life to be. So often detoxing will help us realign our lifestyle, realign our daily habits, but also our greater vision for our life. And if we don't retreat in our home atmosphere, we retreat other places and then we come back and we can't integrate, the nice thing about retreating in your home atmosphere is you can totally realign at home. And your relationships will shift and your kitchen will shift and your closet will shift and everything's shifting because you're doing it right at home. Okay, from Beth. Uh, she doesn't want to drop any more weight. Initially when she was detoxing, she was losing weight and it was awesome. But now she's at her ideal weight and she doesn't want to lose more. And she's wondering how to do this. So there's different reasons to detox. And I, I hope you're getting the sense here that like, I use the word detox pretty loosely. So I might even use the word detox in terms of rebuilding. Because there's so much about detox, it's like 
what are we detoxing? Are we detoxing our, our cells of, of unwanted fat? Are we detoxing our cells of AMA or, or you know, basically food stored as toxins in the, in the cells? Waste accumulation in our body, waste equals weight. But there's also other kinds of waste that don't equal weight. Or are we detoxing our mind? Right, just like the busyness of the mind and maybe we have um, a lot of stored emotions, maybe we're detoxing emotions. Maybe we were detoxing stress, meaning that if we're living from a stressful relationship to life, we're, we're gonna detox, we're gonna let that go, get that toxicity of stress, of inflammation, of acidity, get that out and start to live in a more alkaline, more pranic, environment internally and live in a more easeful relationship with our own life. Right? So maybe that's the nature of our detox. And maybe it doesn't, for some of you, have much to do with food. Maybe the food is just a nourishing whole foods diet, which is, and how to be pretty high in fat. But just detox the other parts of your life. Just take that time for those other parts of your life so that you maybe clarify your bedtime routine so it's more nourishing. Maybe you meditate before bed. Maybe you get more sleep. Go to bed earlier, get more sleep. Maybe you get early, up early and do a better practice. And maybe you, you detox media, so you're not really taking in any TV, radio, anything other than, you know, like really good, solid, uplifting, heart-opening experiences through your five senses. So it might be that. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. It doesn't have to be about like juicing for 10 days or doing the master cleanse for 10 days. Maybe it's just eating like super nourishing food. Maybe part of it is like detoxing your food habits. Maybe you're eating on the run, you're grabbing food here and there and everywhere and you don't really know what you're gonna have for dinner that night. And maybe your detox is that you just prepare really nourishing food for yourself in the morning. You make your meal schedule, you know, three weeks in a row and, and you buy your food at the grocery store and each you know, each evening you prep the food, each morning you make the food, and you have your food done for your day, and your whole lifestyle is more simple. That would be a detox. So there's, you know, physical body detox, there's mental emotional detox, there's relationship detox. And there's also just like our daily, daily kitchen habit detoxes. You know, so there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And I look at it in all these, in all these different ways. Uh, I just want to give you a quick call to action. So if this all sounds good, just go to yogidetox.com and you can sign up for the next live Yogi Detox. Our next one's happening in April. But if those dates don't work, you just sign up and basically you get into the information. We have four live calls that if you don't make them in April, you can hear them in May or June. Um, and you get a three month access pass into all of the, you know, how to do this, how to get deeper in touch, how to awaken your digestive fire, how to let go of what is outdated in your body, your mind, your relationships, your lifestyle. So that's all at yogidetox.com. Okay, so next question is eating disorder. I'm contemplating how or even if I can mindfully detox while dealing with an eating disorder. I'd love to hear your ideas on this topic. Thanks for all you do. You are welcome. Uh, yeah, this comes up a lot. In fact, we have special audios in the Yogi Detox that talk about eating disorders. Because it, just like in the last few questions that I've addressed, that whole sense of maybe it doesn't have to be so much about food. Maybe detox is more about lifestyle. Maybe it's more about your daily habits, about creating a more nourishing relationship with food, about really awakening your five senses and eating. Maybe it's about connecting your physiology, the five elements of your physiology with the five elements in your ecosystem and creating more of a nourishing relationship, more of an inner ecosystem, outer ecosystem exchange of consciousness than it is about not doing this and not doing that and depriving yourself of fat and depriving yourself of carbs and depriving yourself of protein or depriving, you know, it's not, to me, detox should not have really anything to do with deprivation and it should have really anything to do with uh, like discipline in the, in the more firm sense of the word of like you're going to muster up your discipline and not have what you're craving. To me, that's not it. It's just, it's actually so much more uh, sophisticated on one hand and, and, and primitive on the other, where you just get to really 
dive in deep to like what is going to be nourishing to me right now. And anything, anyone with an eating disorder, like really diving into the nourishment question and that nourishment conversation within, but also without, also within the outer ecosystem. Whenever we deepen that conversation, there's a sense of like, right, can I be nourished? Maybe that's the intention instead of like, can I deprive myself? Can I be nourished? So that's where I, that's where I go with that. And I know, I know it's really touchy. I always encourage people with eating disorders who are in the yogi detox. And I'd say it's just like, and it, there are a lot of people in there um, with us that it really is a question of, of deeper nourishment and learning how to tap in the, the Vijnana Maya Kosha, the intuitive body, more with the Anamaya Kosha, the physical body. And that starts to repair the relationship. The Manamaya Kosha, the mind body, often will get too arrow like, too pointed, and start to direct the show between the physical body, and it just drowns out the intuition. So the intuition can't even speak and direct the show of, of how we get nourishment. So I hope that makes sense on some level. There's a good five kosha hygiene free video at yogahealer.com forward slash Ayurveda dash training. Go there for more on five kosha hygiene. Uh, but just, just know that like I get it and it's all about nourishment. It's all about multi-sensory nourishment and daily routines that are nourishment and turning up the intuitive body, connection with the physical body. Okay, next question. How to detox if you're active? or you're an athlete. Um, this is from Sarah, and she is wondering, she has an Ashtanga Vinyasa yoga practice six days a week, two hours a day, and she wants to fuel herself enough that she doesn't burn out. She's a healthy eater in general, but beginning to tell that her digestive system could use a break, and looking forward to figuring out how to give her digestive system a break. So yeah, again, it's, it's, always, it's, all, it's all like multifunctional, right? It's not just about food. You guys, detoxing is not, 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 not just about food and deprivation and discipline. It's about deeper nourishment on multiple levels. What may happen during the process is sometimes we question our assumptions. Like, why do I need to have an Ashtanga yoga practice six days a week for two hours a day? And what we might find is like, actually my body needs a break for a week. Like that's, if I do that, you know, 365 days a year or whatever, minus one day a week, whatever that is, minus 52, 300 and whatever that is, 12 days a year, right? Uh, why am I not taking, twi why am I not really pulsing? Like what's my yoga about? If my yoga is not about pulsation, what is it about? Right, if it's not pulsation between the relative and the absolute, and the absolute and the relative, if it's not pulsation between spirit and body, between prana and matter, like what is it about? There should be pulsation happening. Maybe not the answer you wanted. Uh, I, you know, I, I've worked a lot with athletes, triathletes, um, Ironman, blah, 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 you know, people in the yogi detox and created a very high nourishing whole foods diet as part of their eating plan so that they could train um, and be ready for races. But often what they found is that they didn't need to train as much. Because so much of their mind, their manamaya kosha, was driving their body, and it wasn't in sync. It wasn't their actions weren't coming from intuition, so they actually pulled back, got deeper rest, got deeper restoration, got deeper absorption of nutrients, simplified, and then raced well. Why? Because their whole physiology was more integrated. It wasn't just the mind pushing the body. So that's kind of the the question behind the question is like, is that happening at all? And what happens if you let that go a little bit and just listen deeply to like, does your body want to practice two hours today? And at what level? And what does that practice look like? Maybe it looks a little bit more like restorative sometimes. Maybe it looks like two hours of meditation, you know, during some days of your detox. I don't know. You might not know either, but at least allowing that question, that allows the more intuitive body to start to get really awake. And when that happens, we get a lot more integration through all five koshas. And that's the name of the game. Uh, what is up in the next Yogi Detox? I want to know what I'm heading into <laughs> from Teresa. You know, I do too. Um, this next Yogi Detox, so the, the detox is because they happen twice a year here and we have this amazing library of past conversations and we have recipe books and how to do the daily routines and how to listen in the all five koshas and how to, you know, different yoga practices, meditation practices, pranayama practices all in the vault. 
um, what is up? Like, what, what's new? That's what I'm hearing you asking, Teresa. And so many people have been around for, like, honestly, like years, maybe even a decade. And what is, what is new is conversations with Agni. That's the theme for this April. And it's, it's all about a conversation with your digestifier and deepening the intimacy between the fire in your solar plexus, the, the Chitara Agni. Uh, and, and enhancing the conversation between your Jatara Agni and the Agni in all cells in your body. And also just increasing the conversation between what you're choosing to bring in, letting that come from a conversation with Agni. So it's going to be a conversation slash love affair with your own digestion. Thanks for asking. Okay, so am I still doing that thing where bring three, get in free. This is from a yoga teacher asking if she can still take the detox for free if she gets a bunch of her yoga students to sign up or other teachers to sign up. Yes! And if you want to do this, email tribe, T-R-I-B-E, at yogahealer.com. And Dushko will set you all up with an affiliate link to share on Facebook and all that. And then he'll let you know when you've got three people in. And then he'll just basically plug you in to the course. Okay. Again, if anyone wants into the course, go to yogidetox.com. Okay, this question comes up all the time. Pregnancy, postpartum, and nursing. Is it okay to detox when you're trying to get pregnant or possibly pregnant or in the early stage of pregnancies or even while breastfeeding? Uh, in, in the traditional sense of Ayurvedic Panchakarma, the answer is no, because that process is a process where you take in a lot, you do this process of oleation, you take in a lot of ghee into your digestive tract or sesame oil and you, and you shift your digestive fire from digesting normal food and, and turn it into digesting toxins in the body. Uh, there's a lot that it has to be done really skillfully and you do a purging after and it, then you have to rekindle your agni. It's a whole deep process. It's an option to do that within the yogi detox. It is not, not, not an option for people who are trying to get, or not trying to get pregnant. That's fine. But if you're pregnant, then no. If you're postpartum, not really. But my point being this, in the yogi detox, there's so many different ways to detox. So what I look back, like when I was pregnant, and, and I'll start with pregnancy and then I'll go into postpartum. But when I was pregnant, it was like, there were, I, I would get overfed by people, <laughs> quite honestly. Like you go to someone's house, oh, you're pregnant, you're eating for two, oh, there's all this food. And I, I went through little phases in pregnancy where I got a little lax in my routines, right? I got a little bit just out of sync. People will often do this, in terms of kapha, they'll just maybe get a little lazier, a little slower, whatnot. Other people who have more vata or pitta imbalance, they might get more anxious, or they might get the, the pitta thing is like, I gotta get all this done before the baby's born. Right? And they just get more busy and driven, and, and honestly, they start to burn out. So there's often a tendency, there's like a physical body tendency, there's also a household tendency, a cultural tendency. My sense is if you're if you're pregnant or if you're postpartum, it's a great idea to do more of the at-home retreat, rejuvenation version of the yogi detox. Meaning that it's just so much more nourishing. It's all about cleaning up your act and turning your awareness in and then getting some serious momentum behind that habits of your personal lifestyle. Like what are you designing? What kind of, what, what, what needs to shift in your, you know, in your mind body? to create the most optimal situation for this baby to grow in, for this new being to come in. And what allows you to really heighten your intuition so you can hear, so you can deepen the conversation that's happening between you and the being that's growing in your body or, or on your body. So I, I think it's, I mean, I did through my pregnancy, postpartum, and I just, uh, there's no way I would trade that. There's no way I would trade the depth of practices I did during pregnancy and postpartum. My child is so amazingly open-hearted and so full of love, like so much more so than me and my husband were like, where does this come from? And so my, like my practice was, were so strong during pregnancy and postpartum. Those practices of meditation, of pranayama, going to bed early, of eating nourishing foods, of listening to my Agni, you know, and, and I just see that it, it made such a difference in her. She's so constitutionally strong. She has very high integrity. She has very high emotional integrity. 
Um, and to me, I, I really do attribute that to the practices that I did um, in those earliest, you know, even preconception, conception, pregnancy, postpartum. I think it makes a huge difference on, on a person's life and the person that you're bringing into the world. Okay, craving detox. I've never craved cleansing this early. Okay, this starts to happen, <laughs> okay? So you start, to, you start to crave detoxing. That's true. And this might, you know, some might be like, wow, are we bordering on obsession? I don't find it that way at all. Usually what happens is you get to a point where certain habits are outdated. You know, you've fallen into some lazier habits or you've, you've kind of gotten away from what's really deeply resonant or you've gotten away from life purpose and passion and you need to turn up that dial and get really clear on how can you make a better positive impact with your life. Right? And you start to crave, you just start to crave, like, I need to clear it out. I need to get rid of the gunk and the goo and get aligned and get on track and step into the next level of power. So yes, I crave detox too. Okay, MS and detox. This is the last one. You guys have been champs if you've made it this far. Um, MS and detox. I'm pretty new to you, but love how you write and bring this information to the rest of us. Thank you. I have been interested in yoga and doing a slightly modified practice for a while. I like the idea of Ayurveda, but have a hard time with it as a complete way of life. So do I. Been dealing with MS for 20 years. New books are doing paleo for autoimmune issues, an approach I don't like since I'm not a red meat eater. Also, I walk using a walker. If I could address any ideas that might be relatively simple for those of us with mobility issues and digestive issues. Thanks, Barbara. Okay, so that's, so th again, the, the, when I look at, you know, Barbara, with situations like this is, what, it's like, how easy can it be? How easy can it be to nourish yourself and do the self-care practices you need to keep your channels clear, to keep your body strong, to keep yourself flexible, and really to hardwire more consciousness into your cells? Because the more conscious your cells are, the more connected, the more integrated, the easier it is going to be to move around. So, you know, simple, like looking at the most simple practices around food and nourishment that might be, uh, you know, simply like preparing one pot meals for yourself for the day, preparing like stew or soups for yourself, and maybe even using a crock pot, because I mean, my guess is it's really hard to cook. Using things like root vegetables, which are more grounding to the nervous system, or more grounding to, uh, you know, to diseases like MS. Right, just because simply there's more nourishment, there's more of a downward flow. Doing practices like self-massage, whether that's, you know, if oil is too hard um, and slippery, then even just doing with hands, just doing good self-massage practices, that that can really help. So as far as like the meat or not meat, if, you know, one client I saw uh, go through Panchakarma Clinic when I was in school and working at the Panchakarma Clinic, uh, we used bone broths as oil, as enemas, as like a mixture of like the oily part of the oil enemas. So like taking like chicken bones from a nice local biodynamic organic chicken and boiling those in water for 24 hours in a crock, right? So you get all the bone, uh, the deeper cells of the bone tissue and the bone marrow tissue infused into this liquid medium and then inject them in your butt. This woman walked in with a walker and walked out. And she had, I remember she had MS, I'm not sure how long she, how long she, um, her diagnosis was. If I was going to use animal, uh, you know, animal products for detox, I would use, I would use bone broth. And if you need some flesh, I would use, then I would also use bones with flesh on them. And that's, that, that would be my take is like, how do we get the deepest nutrients into our body from our ecosystem? And for some of you out there, Bone broths are going to be great, and you can use those as a basis of kitchery, like rice and mung beans and that. And for those of you who don't eat just beans well, you could just do like a bone broth plus animal flesh type kitchery with the, you know, with, with some vegetables in it and some spices that are good for, for your digestive system as per your constitution. So all those are in the recipes in the Yogi Detox. Um, but again, I would look at like, how do I simplify nourishment? How do I get you know, just the most sort of calm, nourishing experience in my daily meals. And then how do I get the habits that are just going to allow me to be as conscious and in, as in bodily cellular integrity as I can be 
Um, and, and that would be more of the detox, instead of it just being about food and protein or no protein. That. So I hope that's helpful. All right, this has been quite the session. It went on and on. There's more questions. We're not going to get into them all. But uh, if all this sounds good and you just want to know more, go to yogidetox.com. And for those who are listening, who are part of the tribe and coming back, like I'm so psyched. We've got four live calls together in April and we're going to be deepening our conversation with Agni. We'll be using some voice dialogue and other practices that have, I know you guys love from before. And for those who are new around here, can only be new once. Go to yogidetox.com. Thank you.